So uh, hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, edition of Discussing Digital. Uh, today, I'm speaking uh, with Liz Drury. Um, Liz, would you like to kind of introduce yourself and your company to start with? Absolutely. So uh, my name's Liz Drury, and I'm a freelance voiceover artist, and um, I work across a number of voiceover genres. Um, I tend to do quite a lot of corporate work, so narrating people's website videos and videos that are going to go on social media to explain their products and services. I narrate a lot of e-learning courses for online training. Um, I've voiced a lot of audio tours, museums and art galleries, uh, announcements for events, radio adverts, all kinds of things that require a recorded voice. I do from my little broadcast quality home studio here in North Lincolnshire. Brilliant. Um, obviously, we're talking about how, how uh, you use digital marketing, but obviously from, you know, from what you've just said and from what we've worked as well, obviously, voiceovers is quite an important part of digital marketing as well. So perhaps start off where we can talk a bit about how you're marketing your services hmm. and then maybe talk about how your services are used in, in, in digital marketing to give people a, more of an idea of the, the role and the importance uh, of voiceovers. Yeah, so I, I do a lot of a lot of networking uh, to promote my business, and of course, of that a lot of that has gone digital over the last couple of years. Um, you know, I used to go to a lot of face to face meetings. Now I don't go to very many face to face meetings at all. It's nearly all online networking, and that's been great for my business actually because what I do is not geographically restricted at all. You know, I can work for anybody anywhere in the world. And so now that networking has expanded so that you can network with people all around, around the country and all around the globe, you know, that's really opened things up for me. Um, so I'm, I've really been enjoying that. Other things that I do, uh, I make use of social media, like, like a lot of people do, um, particularly LinkedIn. Um, you know, a lot of what I do is, is very much business to business. And I feel that's where most of my clients are hanging out. So that's where I tend to put most, most of my effort. But I do you know, to have a presence on some of the other social media platforms as well. And good old emailing people works. Um, you know, I will, will Google people that I'm interested in working with. I will go and look at their website, find something to comment on, and then send them an email saying, really love such and such thing on your website. Tell them a bit about what I do and say, you know, if I can ever be of any help, let me know. And, uh, and I never just leave it at one email. If they don't respond to that, I have a, a, a follow-up sequence of another five emails that go out over the course of another five months. And um, it's surprising how even sometimes on that very last email, people can come back and say, do you know, thanks for keeping in touch with us. Sorry, we haven't replied up to now. We've just been really busy, but now we've got something that you can do for us. And, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's easy to kind of send a single email and think, oh, well, I've contacted them. Um, yeah. But pe people are busy. And I, mean, I know this, this myself, you know, something will come into my inbox and I'll think, oh, that's interesting. I'll deal with that later. And then 10 other emails come and I've forgotten all about it. So it's only if they come back to me again and I think, oh yeah, I did want to do something with that. <laughs> no, I, I think that's a really, really good point. It was a very interesting uh, sort of about email because I do think so many businesses have kind of been put off or just forget about how to use email. And that's a, that's a brilliant way that, that you've just explained of how business can use uh, email to target particular uh, businesses that you might want to use. That, that's fascinating. So do, do that sequence, if you don't get a response, to, uh, is it a manual sequence you do or do you use uh, kind of like an autoresponder to, to drive yeah, that for you? It, it, it's automated. So um, within my within my CRM that I use, I have I, I can I can set up this email sequence um, so I can just set and forget it. So when I send that initial email, I also set the, follow, the five follow ups as well. And then if somebody comes back to me at any point during that sequence, I will then go in and switch off the other emails so they don't get the remaining ones. Uh, um, excellent. Yeah. yeah, that's much, much easier than trying to remember. Oh, I need to go need to reach out to them again. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I, I agree. And, and that's a really good use. So that's built into your CRM. Can I be nosy and ask what CRM system you use? Yeah, it's called 17 Hats, which a lot of people haven't haven't heard of. 
Um, and the reason that I use that CRM is because it has that feature in it. And that's the thing that I use most. Right. It's got lots of other bells and whistles that I've got no idea what they do. Um, but um, it does what I need it to do. Well, it, no, that's great. I'm, I, I'm going to have to go and do a bit of research on that afterwards. That's uh, that's fascinating. Um, and it was interesting you mentioned it as well uh, when you're talking about that a minute uh, about your, your social media that... Um, LinkedIn seems to be the the, the one uh, that that works best for you as well because mm-hmm. obviously, obviously I've sort of did a bit of a uh, bit of homework. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked at some of your social media, although we're pretty well connected already because we, we we've worked together in the past. Um, and it was interesting. I could see that kind of you tend that there were more posts and things on LinkedIn um, for the, than on the other platforms. So uh, which. I suspect it was because you were finding finding it best um, for you. So, so do you do any of that sort of stalking work on, on LinkedIn as well? Yeah, I, I, do, I do reach out to people on LinkedIn, um, you know, similar to, to, to the email, and I will search for, let's say, instructional designer, um, who are the people that tend to put together e-learning courses. And I will then go in and have a look at their profile. I will send them a connection request. And I always send a note with it as well. I never just send a connection request unless it's somebody that I've just met at a networking meeting and they know where I've, I've come from. Um, but I will say, you know, um, explain a bit about me. I'm a freelance voiceover artist. I work a lot in the learning and development sector and I'm looking to grow my network in this particular field. It'd be great to connect with you. And, you know, and sometimes if there's something in their profile that stood out to me, I might comment on that as well. So just yesterday, actually, I, I found somebody working in learning and development who lives in the next village to where my parents live. <laughs> and so that was, you know, something. And yeah. I said, oh, is this, is this road Northampton you live in? And she wrote back and said, yes, it is. And so we had a bit of a conversation. So you know, it's always great if you can find something that will start a conversation with somebody. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, I, and it, has, it has led to work for me um you know through linkedin um so that's that's definitely my my preferred social media platform yeah and and, and, and yeah that that's uh, again combined with your with, with your email sequence it's a great example of actually it's almost like you start off you, you're not really pitching for work to start with it's all about building that right. conversation and getting to know each other and, and, and understanding what you provide and what and what they provide so it's it's surprising how many people don't do that. They think, oh, I just send them a message. And then if I don't get a response, which is a sale, I give up. But it's mm. it's, just, it's all about building those relationships, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, nobody wants to be sold to, do they, at the end of the day? But everybody likes to be helped. So you, if you can come across as being helpful and say, you know, if, if I can ever help you with anything, let me know. That's much better than saying, oh, did you know I can do this, this and this and I can help you do this, this, that and the other. No one wants to know that. They just switch off right away. Yes. <laughs> uh, surprising how many people don't jump into that as well. Um, and talk about getting to, to meet like, like know and trust. Um one, I know we talked about you, you mentioned about networking and, and how that's expanded, but I, I also um, noticed that, that um, you've been running a podcast um, and for the last year or so. Um, yeah. And I think they're a great way to get for people to get to know each other as well, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my podcast started in uh, January 2021. So it's just just over a, a year old now. And I've been toying with the idea of a podcast for a while and people kept saying to me, you're a voiceover artist, you've got all the equipment, you've got the voice, why don't you do a podcast? And I ne- never really knew what my podcast should be about. And I didn't want to do anything in the field of voiceover because I know plenty of people that already do voiceover related podcasts and do it very well. And I didn't really think I had anything extra I could add. Um, but I often got asked to speak at voiceover conferences or or webinars to to voiceover um, other people in the voiceover industry about networking. So I thought, well, if people in my own industry are coming to me as like the expert in networking, why don't I make my podcast about that? So um, so that that's how it, how it came about. So it's called Small Business Big Network, and it's very much for small business owners who want to get more out of their networking. And I've you know, I've talked to all sorts of business owners. Um, and I, you know, I like to talk to people who are using networking in some way to grow their business, or maybe they met their business partner through networking, or maybe they met their life partner through networking. You know, people who've got interesting stories to share. And uh, yeah, there's been some really, really interesting episodes. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I listened to a couple and snippets of, of a few, but it looks like, do you kind of roughly do one every week? Yes, I do. When, when I first started, I thought I will commit to doing two episodes a month. I thought that would be enough to, to cope with. And I very quickly got to the point where I got so much material. I was saying to people, well, this isn't going out for about 10 weeks. <laughs> I thought, no, this is silly. So, so I went to once a week. Um, and, and, and so far, it hasn't been too bad to keep up with it. I mean, I think I'm about four weeks ahead of myself at the moment uh, with another couple of interviews coming up you know, in, in, in the next week. Um, but yeah, I haven't found it too difficult to find people who want to, want to come and talk to me. So, uh, so far, so good. <laughs> Yeah, I must admit, it, 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 it's surprising. I, I mean, so this is episode four that we're recording of my one, and, I, and I'm kind of aiming to do it fortnightly. Um, and at the moment, it's it's all video, but my intention is that I'll transfer this into um, an, an audio hmm. version as well in the future when, I, when I've when i got time to kind of sit down and work out <laughs> all the mechanics of uh, publishing podcasts. I, I, I've, I've sussed how to publish on YouTube. That's easy, but it's because of my, my background working video in the past. But, yeah, I've got so... Um, but yeah, it's it's fascinating. Again, it's another sort of really growing um, genre for people to again mm. help people get to get to know you. Uh, and obviously, as a voiceover artist, I suppose doing a podcast almost becomes natural because of because of uh, w- what you do. Yes, yeah. I mean, I've got got the equipment already, and it's it's just another place where where people can find me, where they can hear my voice. Um, you know, even though I'm not talking about voiceover. Um, you know, I always say in part of my introduction at the start of every uh, podcast episode is, you know, I'm Liz Joy, my freelance voiceover artist. So anyone listening to my podcast, even if they've never come across me before, will know what it is that I do. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, another thing I noticed that, that you do, and I don't I didn't look very far back only last last couple of weeks. But I noticed that you, you, you've been doing kind of um, a Friday a uh, summary video of, my of, roundup of... my roundup video yes I've been doing that for over a year now actually um and I got the idea from some somebody else you know the best ideas always pinched aren't they and uh someone I connected to on LinkedIn she does a thing on a Friday where she does shout outs to people that she's met during the week and she um Hers is a video, but there's no there's no talking on it. She just has music in the background. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And she you know, she holds up cards saying thanks to so and so for whatever this week. And I thought, you know, she gets quite a lot of interaction on those. So I thought I'll, I'll do something similar, but I thought I'll do mine as a as a spoken video. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so every Friday I write myself a little script of who I've met, what I've done that week. So uh, you'll be featuring. <laughs> oh, I look forward to it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I give people a mention in my video. And then I, when I post it on LinkedIn and I also post it on my, my Facebook business page as well. And I tag in the people that I've mentioned in the video. Brilliant. And uh, yeah, pe- people seem to like it. A lot of people tell me they've seen it. So so that's good. No, that's great. And, and, and again, uh, another great way. And and also that, that tagging people in, again, it helps grow it. And I presume with a bit like a few of them then share it as well. So yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah. No, no, all, all really good stuff. Um, and and Again, talking about LinkedIn, one of, the, one of the things I'd asked you about was to talk to you uh, uh, about a favourite post or a success, most successful post. Um, yes. And so uh, you, you sent uh, me a, a link to post on, on, on LinkedIn. I think it's from a couple of months ago for, about your son. So do you want to just yes. tell everyone a little bit about that? And we'll, we'll, we'll... Yeah. So yes, yeah, so my, my best performing post has nothing to do with my business whatsoever. How typical is that? But it's had <laughs> over 6,000 people look at that. Wow. And um, just before Christmas, my son, who is in the Army Cadets and in the Army Cadet Force Band for uh, Lincolnshire, went for an audition uh, to join the Army as a musician. And he passed. And um it, we we didn't think that he would so <laughs> it was I was really really proud of him and I posted a picture of him in his, his cadet uniform which we'd taken on Remembrance Sunday and uh you know and said you know really proud of William he's passed this today and so many people commented on that including people that had been in the army themselves and been musicians and said oh we'll have a great time as I was t- t- telling you before we actually started recording he's now thinking I don't know if I want to go in the army I'm like oh William <laughs> everyone's behind you go do it <laughs> uh, the, uh, it's, I mean I find it fascinating sometimes that though, you know although LinkedIn is very business orientated sometimes if you, if you post one with a bit of a personal slant sometimes uh, again, it helps with the meet like no trust thing, but um, yeah. quite, quite often 
they do get a lot of reaction, uh, particularly yeah. when they're interesting, like things like that, where you know, like, uh, w- which is a great sense of achievement for for, for, for you and uh, and your family. Um, so, it's I think that's another important thing. To, yes, it's business stuff, but it's not all about business. Yeah. Um, another a, a, another one that I had a lot of success with was really random, and you know, I, I try and post something on LinkedIn every weekday at least because I think you've got to be consistent to you know, for people to see you. And this particular day, I thought, you know. Nothing interesting has happened today. I can't think what to post about. And I'd just eaten my lunch and I'd eaten in front of my computer, which is, is, is a mistake. And I'd had a cherry tomato. And as I bit into the tomato, it squirted all over my screen. And I, <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I'm going to post about that. So I went to the fridge and I got another cherry tomato and I put it on my keyboard and I took a picture and I posted it to LinkedIn and wrote this, you know, what, what just happened at lunchtime. And that just got loads of interaction. You know, people that done the same thing or people said, oh, you were really silly or, yeah. So, again, nothing to do with work, but it, lots of people interacted with it. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. Although I, should, I think we should point out we're not advising people to squirt tomato all over. No, the don't do it. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Um, I know, again, b- before we, were, we started recording, we were talking um, and um, you were saying about how, um, e-learning has become really important uh, and mm. how um, y- your involvement and the growth of, of, of um, voiceovers in that uh, sector um, has happened. So I just wonder if you want to just like talk, talk a bit more uh, about that, because I yeah. know there's a big push for e-learning at the moment. Um, Absolutely. We're still at yeah. Home. yeah, yeah. I mean, e- e-learning, you know, on- online training was a growing market anyway before 2020. But the pandemic has just accelerated things. Um, you know, so so many more training courses had to move online because people couldn't meet face to face. And now people are realizing actually we don't need to do it face to face, or we can do um you know a combination. Um, and so trainers are able to be in more than one place at the same time because they can go and do something in person. But if they've got an online course, they can be selling that at the same time to lots of other people. Um, you know, may- maybe that's a slightly lower cost option for the people buying the course. And it's, you know, it's an evergreen thing that they can keep you know, selling again and again. So, um, you know, I've been working in the e-learning industry for you know a-, a few years, but I've found that my work in that field has just, um, you know, really increased over the last couple of years. And I've worked across all sorts of different sectors, you know, narrating courses for um, the healthcare industry, for um, to do with health and safety, for um, public transport, for food safety. I've done um, all, all kinds of things. You know, people need training in all sorts of things. And it, it's fascinating. Actually, I learn quite a lot <laughs> while I'm narrating <laughs> e-learning courses. <laughs> yes. I must admit, I mean, as I said, we, we worked bef- before I mentioned, uh, and, and they, we, we, I, I was producing a set of um, training videos for somebody and you did the voiceovers for me. Mm. So, uh, yes, it, it, it is interesting. And it's, it's a, certainly a direction of travel that uh, a lot of people sort of want to go down um yeah. yeah it's certainly something that that my longer term aim is uh and that's my wife delivering some food for me <laughs> <laughs> so, um yeah so uh, no it's it, it, it's good uh, i i am conscious i know you said you had another uh, another um appointment in a minute another, another podcast that you want to podcast, so, yeah um Sort of, we're here towards the, the the wrap up, um, and one of the things I've sort of said, I really, I ask our people, uh, sort of people I speak to, to kind of come up with is um, a recommendation of, of one good thing for people to do within their digital marketing. Mm. So, um, yeah, well, I, I think you know I have already mentioned this, but I think it's worth mentioning again is to be consistent um, with with social media. So you know, as I said, I try and post on LinkedIn every every weekday. And I made a conscious decision to do that a few years ago. And I had had a LinkedIn profile for a while and never did much with it unless I thought I'd really got something to shout about. And I thought, I wonder what difference it will make if I start posting consistently. And the difference was just phenomenal. Um, You know, so many more people started seeing my stuff and commenting on my posts and so on. So I think that's the key is to be be consistent with it yeah no no that's great and conversely is there something you would say just don't do that or avoid doing that yeah I think again to do with social media I think don't spread yourself too thinly I mean I do have a presence on a number of different platforms but LinkedIn is the one that I concentrate on and I tend to cross post to Facebook because that's easy to do 
But I think you can drive yourself into the ground trying to post on LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest. And what you need to do is, is work out which is the one that works best for you and concentrate on that. You know, where, yeah. where are your clients? That's I, where you need to be. I completely agree. Fo- focus on one. Uh, get that working for you, whichever one that is that suits your business. But no, I think that's brilliant advice as well. Um, okay, so we're moving towards the end now. So I'll, I'll share all the links that you've put on the video. Mm-hmm. But if somebody wants to to um, reach out and connect with you or, or, or speak with you about their potential um, options that, that they might have of working with you, what's the best way for them to uh, contact you? Either through my website, which is lizdrury.co.uk. That's quite easy to remember. Or through LinkedIn. You know, I'm pretty active on there and always respond to messages that I receive through there. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I think it's been, been great. To, you shared so many really good tips. Um, and uh, it's really also good to get a bit more of an insight into, into uh, the, your, your world of, of voiceovers. Because uh, I, I do think it's a, um, a fascinating industry and a really important part of uh, digital marketing. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you, hopefully working with you again in the future.